And welcome back to Hannity. Now, every now and then we come across a person who has a story that is so remarkable, it just has to be shared. Now, that is the case with a truly great American still serving his country long after most of us would, well, be enjoying a quiet life in retirement. Jose? Yes, sir. My name's Erwin. When 90-year-old Erwin Stovroff meets sick and injured vets at the West Palm Beach VA Hospital, well, they have a good reason to say thank you. It's a wonderful thing. Now, it's because of Irwin that that hospital has Bruce, a black lab service dog that the vets say is a life changer. He's a great dog. Oh, he's more than great. He's wonderful. Like I say, an angel without wings. My program is Vets Helping Heroes, and we're all veterans. But what the patient does not know is the journey that brought Irwin and Bruce to their door. Now, it's a journey that began more than 70 years ago. American soldiers of the sky are one section in the multiple stroke of war. As they fly to spearhead the offensive that is to win the European war. When the U.S. entered World War II, Irvin Stovrov was a 19-year-old bombardier in the Air Force flying B-24 bombers over Europe. I was very young, and I wanted to do my part. The Germans had this 88 millimeter and uh, it was uh, an incredibly accurate. Almost 50% of the planes that went into combat were shot down. After 34 bombing raids, Irwin's final mission took him over Nazi-occupied France. We were just going to go blow up all these bridges, blocking the Germans from escaping from the, from the coastline in Normandy. I was lining up my bomb site, and wham, we got hit. The B-24 was going down fast. I put on my chute and I just dove head first out, the, out of the plane and uh, counted to 10 and then pulled my chute. This was on the, right on the front lines and they were shooting at us coming down. It was another waking up realization that you, buddy, are really in deep trouble. Deeper trouble than the rest of his 10-man crew because as they fell into Nazi hands, Erwin knew that his dog tags identified him as being Jewish. The first thing I did when I landed was to throw my dog tags away. And by that time, they were there. And they just had all their guns around me and just told me to surrender. Erwin and his unit survived the crash but were suddenly POWs. They were soon stuffed into cattle cars and headed for Germany. I was taken and put into uh, a camp uh, in Barth, Germany, which is on the Baltic, right near the Polish border. So it was cold. He was held by the Nazis in deplorable conditions for more than a year. Yet for most of that time, he held out hope. I was uh, very optimistic until in February of 1945, Hitler decided in his crazy mind that anything that was anywhere near a Jew should be killed. And that's when, in my camp, we were segregated. Knowing that they really and truly wanted to kill me was a very, very unpleasant experience. But uh, we made it. Now, before he could be executed, the camp was liberated. And eventually, Irwin made it back home. I recognize that I am a very fortunate man. I am very proud of, of the fact that I really and truly did do something uh, in combat for my country. Seventy years later, Irwin takes an annual flight on the old B-24 bombers. You guys know what any of these planes are? Where they're from? World, World War II. That World, World War II. II. And shares a bit of living history with generations that have only seen these things in books. What we were trying to do was save the world. And we did. But slowing down has never been in Irwin's nature. I worked till I was 75. And when I retired, I decided that there was something more than my ability to play tennis, which was getting pretty crappy. I wanted to do something to help those that were coming back not as lucky as I am. So he started Vets Helping Heroes, raising money to provide specially trained service dogs to injured troops returning from today's wars. I learned for the first time that our government had no funds for trained service dogs or guide dogs for the blind and disabled. I couldn't believe it. And so at age 90, he's more determined than ever to make sure that those returning from war are going to be taken care of. Now we're talking about young people coming back that are brain damaged and young people coming back without arms and legs. And 
how are they going to get around and who's going to help them and who's going to guide them? And it has to be a dog. Joseph Worley lost one leg and severely damaged the other in a roadside bomb attack in Fallujah, Iraq. Now his service dog, Benjamin, helps him with his daily tasks that he used to take for granted. For a lot of guys, these dogs could be basically their only support system. I mean, I think for some guys it's vital. Depending on the extent of the training of a dog, it will cost anywhere from about $20,000 up to $60,000. $60,000 is a guide dog. That's for the blind. Can you imagine taking a young man, having him sign a contract that he's willing to give his life up for, for his country, and then when he comes back home, he isn't taken care of fully? Lieutenant Colonel Kathy Champion served in the Army for more than 27 years. While treating sick Iraqis, she contracted a virus that left her blind. Devastated, she completely shut down. I quit school. I quit my job. Um, I quit being social. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I didn't want to tell anybody what was wrong or what was really happening to me. Until she was given Angel, a service dog. She has granted me back the life that I felt like was taken away from me because of my war injuries. But for me, it was going back to me. Come here, baby. That's a good boy. Now back at the VA hospital, Bruce boy. roams the halls helping the veterans cope with daily life. He's got a calming effect on me. You know, you bring him around and I just get to pet him and play with him and he cheers me up. He really does. It's, you know, a day with Bruce is like a day with sunshine. He's really a great dog. This is the, the living proof of what a dog can mean. Oh, to anybody, Certainly anybody. To anybody, but especially to a veteran. Especially when we're alone. Yes. We need a friend. And you get to play with them. It's just a joy. It breaks up the monotony. It's, it's, uh, it makes you feel like you're not in a hospital. He's an angel. And this guy's the wings. Somebody hide him. I don't know where they put him. But he's got a pair of wings somewhere. When uh, somebody's suffering from, uh, let's say, P PTSD, which we've got thousands of them coming back this way. You know, they're afraid to leave their house. And when they have the dog with them, they're not afraid anymore. Their, cha their life changes. Come here. Get this. There we go. Look at the medals on this guy. And that's our insignia. See, that's Cash. Now, Irwin's own service dog, Cash, helps him with the PTSD that he still lives with from his time as a POW. And he is determined to make sure that every returning soldier who needs a dog will be able to get one of their own. If people are, are watching this and people are understanding what, what we're trying to accomplish, uh, help us. When you help us, you're helping a veteran. And he's earned it. You've been nice. And you deserve it too, Irwin, and thank you for everything that you do for our country. Now, to help Irwin and the vets who need these dogs, just go to VetsHelpingHeroes.org. That's VetsHelpingHeroes.org.